we crossed the border from Southern Ireland to Northern Ireland. Don't know where we crossed it. Without knowing where the border was because there was no transition, no sign, nothing. We just know things are now in pounds. So what are the differences you're noticing? Yeah, so the money is now in pounds um, because you can see this, the prices and the signs and stuff. Also, um, the you can tell that the, like, the architecture of the homes and stuff is a little more English looking now that we're in Northern Ireland. It's more of a brick Tudor style than the classic stone um, and uh, the stone look of Southern Ireland, so that's different. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we're, we're a few hours from, we're going to Dunluce Castle right now, and then we're going to the Carrickery Bridge, and we're going to the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. And hopefully we'll get some lunch before we get there because we're starting to get hungry. But it's a beautiful We've also day. recently discovered cappuccinos, which we really like, actually. Well, we, so, we know what cappuccinos are. But yeah, but it's different in the States. Yeah, it's like a it's like a European, it's like an authentic cappuccino here, and we like them. They're actually good here. So, off we go to do that. Look for a sheep. 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 Okay, so we made it to Northern Ireland. I probably have ice cream on my face. We are at the Giant's Causeway in Bush Mills. We um, just found a place to park and bought some ice cream. Cheers. And uh, yeah, so we're walking to the Giant's Causeway. Hopefully, hopefully we like it. Almost to the Giant's Causeway, Coley. How you feeling? You excited? Yeah. Tired of walking? Tired from the hour-long nap I just took. Ah, uh, that's right. Ooh. Somebody's been napping while I've been driving. No, and then you take me out of the car and expect me to walk about two miles. I know. How how could you possibly? <laughs> watch your footing around here. I said, watch your footing around here. Do you feel the other Good job, sweetie. Cool. There we are. You see how they're almost like made for people to walk on, like steps? Mm -hmm. Isn't it cool?
What do you think about it? What do you think about the Giants Causeway? Okay. Yeah? Is it what you thought or is it different? Uh, different. Different? Woo! But they were all like the same shape. Yeah, well they're still... Like, they ran a rock shape. Yeah. You have to think of their, their rocks, so... I mean, as far as rocks go, they're pretty impressive. I think, anyway. So it's like a... They're like a sort of a hexagon. Like yeah, they do. Okay, so we are going right now to cross the Karikareed Rope Bridge. I'm really excited about it. I've wanted to do this thing for a long time. And we don't know the history of it, but we're going to hopefully find out. Little tiny island right out there. That's where we're heading. A brief history. Karikareed in the Scottish Gaelic, Karikareed means the road, the rock in the road. The road is the sea route for Atlantic salmon on their westward journey past Carrick Island. For over 350 years, fishermen have strung a rope bridge 30 meters above the sea to allow them to cross the best places to catch the migrating salmon. Oh, okay, it's salmon related, that's cool. I love salmon. Crossed regularly by local fishermen, the bridge now presents a challenge to thousands of visitors each year who come to enjoy the same views and high thrills. Those who do succeed in crossing are rewarded with an abundance of plants and wildlife. So it's, so they built the bridge for f salmon fishermen to get to like a better place to do their fishing? Pretty much. That's cool. We are getting closer to the rope bridge. What was it? Two kilometers, something like that, of a walk, which is... No, are you serious? Yeah. Which is like, uh, gosh, I don't know. Maybe a mile and a half? We don't really know kilometers. Oh, big steps. Bridge, and we're here. You ready? Oh, wow! Here we go. Go to call. Woo! Nice and easy. There you go. Got a girl. I know. What do you think of it? How's that? Good. It's fun. Officially crossed the Karikari Bridge. It does. It smells like seafood up here. That's the fish. Yeah! 
I don't think it was as scary as I thought. What do you think? No, it did I'm shake. I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> it shook pretty bad. But it did shake pretty good, but yeah, I don't think it was scary. I looked down and I was like... The only thing is like if you're holding on, you're walking on the planks and uh -huh. holding on to the ropes, you're fine. But if you actually lost footing, you'd stick your whole foot through oh, that yeah. netting. It's really it. light netting. Yeah, it's, it would be easy to fall through. Crossing the bridge together. Two for one. Oh, gosh. You're okay. You got it. Oh, my gosh. Look, someone's foot went through there. Well, that's a bit terrifying. Oh. You really take time to think about it. Last thing on Tuesday of week two of our honeymoon. We came to see Nicole. The dark hedges. Yeah, and this was your thing, right? Yeah, it's my idea. I thought it looked really cool, um, especially in the photographs, but it is very populated here, <laughs> even on a lots, late Tuesday night. Lots of people, it's about eight o'clock at night. Um, and it's actually kind of sad. A lot of the trees are carved on with names, um, and some of them look like they've maybe been chopped a little bit, yeah. so. I think maybe lightning too. It's still kind of cool, so we'll give you a it's little cool. look at it's, it. It's a lot smaller than it looks, so we'll show you. Today is August 15th. It is Thursday of our second week of our honeymoon. And we are still in Northern Ireland. We're on our way to Southern Ireland. But today we stopped in a town called Downpatrick. And uh, this is where St. Patrick's grave is. And we are at the Down Cathedral here. We just arrived. And we're about to go in and check out St. Patrick's grave. I think St. Patrick's grave is actually in the graveyard out back. But we're gonna figure it out. Yeah. Nicole. Nicole from Lance. Oh, Lance. Yes. Nice All right. <laughs> Be careful, Lance. <laughs> um, everything's unusual in this cathedral because it's not the shape of a cross. Most oh. cathedrals are. Yeah. Most cathedrals have a great big area when you come in the west door where the people sit, called the nave. Uh -huh. And then you go through the screen and you're into the choir. And then you're up to the sanctuary. But here with the choir up the stairs. Okay. Yeah. Very um, nice. With the bishop's throne here, instead of up there in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And look at the seats the people have. Yeah, it's different. They're, they're boxes, uh -huh. which is uh, kind of unusual. It is unusual. And kind of the scariest thing in this cathedral is, this is called the judge's stall. Oh. And ordinary justice was doled out in this holy place during the 1800s. Okay. And so it's like a courtroom. There's a court, yes, like okay. a courtroom. Yeah. And down there, there's a courthouse. So I'm assuming that they were kind of busy someday and you were a spare judge, so you were sent up here, you were sent in there, and you were brought in having stolen two sheep. And do you know what your sentence was? Probably death. No, not, not, yeah, it's not that bad, okay. <laughs> Transportation. Oh. You know the word, do you know what that means? Mm, they're probably going to take me away somewhere. Exactly, Australia. Uh. So going from here to Australia for stealing two sheep. Wow. So... That, so that's very unusual. Uh, this is the St. Patrick window, which I suppose almost tells the story. As a boy kidnapped from the south of Wales, brought to County Antrim, which is north of Belfast, mm -hmm. to look after sheep for six years. And then he got the message to get away to Europe and become a priest and a bishop, and he did in France. And then he got the message again, I always say these things, it makes people laugh. He got sent another text message, you know, in 432, but whatever uh -huh. message was needed to be sent, yeah. came to him in 432, the 5th century, mm. to go back to Ireland, right? Uh -huh. Not Dave Keenan returning to Ireland, but he came back to Ireland in the last 29 years of his life. He brought the Christian message to the island of Ireland. 
and he covered 90% of the island of Ireland in the 400s. Wow. So he walked. The, he walked, or maybe he had like the back of a donkey. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just himself, of course. It was a group of other priests and people to do the cooking and shooting the animals to have yeah. your dinner and all that stuff. But just imagine it wow. if we were part of a group hacking our way through trees and over rivers, and all of a sudden there's some chief comes up and says, who do you think you are? Yeah. And he says, well, I'm only here to bring the Christian message. Is this it? Where? Where's it a pointing sign? Yeah, I think it's a pointing sign. Oh, we're right here. This is it. This is it. So that's it. Some big old rock to mark his grave. There it is. The grave of St. Patrick. I don't even want a picture of St. Patrick. Alright, now we are going to Trim Castle. Nicole? I'm really excited to be here because this is where uh, Braveheart was filmed with Mel Gibson, my favorite actor. Mel Gibson! I'm hoping there's like a like a cardboard stand-up. So I take a picture. But I'm not gonna get my hopes too high. Alright, so we made it to Trim Castle. So Trim Castle is the largest Anglo-Norman castle in Ireland, undisputedly in Europe. It was built at the end of the 12th century, 1172, by a man named Hugh de Lacy. To understand why it was built, you have to go back a few years earlier to 1169. There was a chieftain of Ireland, his name was Dermot MacMurrow. He was trying to become the High King of Ireland, a ruler of the entire country. There were other chieftains around who were trying to take his power off him. So he went over to the French-born King Henry II of England and asked him for help in acquiring troops to take his land back. <coughs> so King Henry II said to Dermot that he would be granted the troops on the condition that he swear an oath of loyalty to the King of England first, which Dermot did. So King Henry II sent over a thousand Anglo-Norman troops that landed in Waterford on the south coast of Ireland in 1169 and camped there for a year until 1170. The leader of this army was a Welsh baron named Richard de Clare, or as he is known in Irish history as Strongbow. Now by 1170 Strongbow started getting powerful. He wanted to try and take Dublin, which was by then a major Viking city, and use it as a base to establish his own independent kingdom free from English rule. King Henry II didn't like the idea of, of a potential power threat, so he asked his second best general in command, Hugh de Lacy, over from England to stop Strombo's advancement. King Henry II said to Hugh de Lacy, that whatever lands you take back and claim under Norman control, they're yours to keep for good. To solidify this agreement, King Henry II granted Hugh de Lacy the Lordship of Mead in 1172. This was an area of land stretching from the Shannon River in the west of Ireland to the Irish Sea in the east of Ireland, a total land size of over a million hectares under the control of one man. The very first castle that was built here wasn't made out of stone, it was made out of a material called wattle and daub, or wood and earth. Now the problem with wood and earth castles is that they're highly flammable. And the very first castle that was built here burnt down in early 1172. The first foundation stones of the building were laid in mid 1172. There was then another floor added in 1176. And then the third and final building, the remains of which you see today, were built in 1207. 
the entry gate that you all just came through is known as the trim gate if you looked up when you were buying your tickets you would have seen a small square hole in the archway those holes are called murder holes what these are is that if you're an enemy <coughs> trying to come in here to take this castle the soldiers at the top can see that you're advancing they can then throw hot ash boiling oil rocks or the remainder of your toilet out on top of the heads of anybody coming underneath building over to the right with the red wood panelling <coughs> is the remains of the dungeon Okay, so tell us what happened here, Nicole. In, from Mel Gibson's store in the gate. In the movie Braveheart. That's right. In the movie Braveheart. Standing where Mel Gibson stood. <laughs> okay. Ready to get locked in here. Come on. I know we're gonna get locked in because they're closing <laughs> the gates. So what do you think? They just put like a fake wooden gate here for the movie or something? And Trim Castle! We spent a couple days in Dublin. Uh, we didn't do any filming because we're both kind of tired and the batteries are kind of dead on the camera, but we had a good time in Dublin. We were able to go see the Book of Kells and the big library, which was nice, and uh, spent some time walking around the city and walking through the shops, and that was cool too. So we, I think we much prefer the more relaxed small town Ireland more than the city, wouldn't you agree, Nicole? Mm -hmm. So anyway, now we are in Castle Martyr. We made it back to Cork. We've officially made our loop all the way around Ireland. And we're going to stay at this really nice hotel, but we're trying to figure out how to get in. So that's where we're at. Alright, so we arrived at our last nice hotel in Ireland. This is Castle Martyr Resort. Our next hotel is just the airport hotel, so we're going to enjoy this one tonight, aren't we, Nicole? Yep. Doing a quick tour of the Castle Martyr Hotel Room. It's kind of a mess because we've been in here already. This is our sitting room here with our desk. And over here you saw we had a little coffee station. Biggest TV we've had yet in Ireland. Usually they're really small, but that's a nice one. And our little hutch area. All of our closet space and then the master bathroom here. Beautiful bathroom. Lots of marble is in her sink. Water closet there. And then a bathtub over here. A really nice soaker bathtub. And a shower. Waterfall shower. Today, we've done a lot of traveling and we went to the Blarney Stone, but because we were both exhausted and I forgot my camera in the car. We didn't film any of it, but we just checked into the Cork International Hotel and we told them it's our honeymoon. Actually, we didn't even tell them. They asked, they no. said, why are you here? We're like, it's our honeymoon. Yeah. Yeah. So then they said, well, we'll upgrade you for free to the suite and include breakfast. So here we go. So let's see what the suite looks like. Zimba, look at that. Alright, come on. 
Nice big bed. Let's see the rest of our upgrade. Ooh, dark bathroom. Our second living room. Our second <laughs> bathroom number two. Like a wet bar. And a giant living room. You like our upgraded room, baby? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Leather couch. And Nicole's knee. All right, well. And freshly poured still water. Taking this puppy. Popping bottles. Okay. Did you have a good time on our honeymoon? I did. Love you. I love you too. All right, well, that's our honeymoon, 2019. Mm -hmm.